And joining us right now, live from Washington, D.C., is Texas Senator Ted Cruz. Good morning to you, Senator. Good morning. Good I, to be with you. It's great to have you as well. Well, 2015 just barely starting, but already people are talking about 2016. Uh, for folks at home, uh, Paul Ryan revealed he's out, so scratch him off the list. Uh, Mitt Romney, big question mark, maybe. Jeb started a pack, so he's in it to win it. And Marco Rubio's got a new book out. It is called uh, American Dreams. He was here just a little while ago, and he said this about him perhaps running for president of the United States. Listen to this, Senator. He's going to be a very credible candidate. You I mean you heard reports that he's going to raise a hundred million dollars in the first three months of the year. He's certainly capable of doing that or more, really. Right. And uh, and so that's a lot of money. And I think he'll be a very strong and credible candidate. But if you decide, if I decide that the best place for me to serve this country that has given us so much is by being its president, I'm going to run for that no matter who else is in the race. Sure. Okay. So Ted Cruz, what about you? Well, it's certainly something I'm looking at very seriously, and, and I think we're at a time of enormous challenge. I mean, we are starting a national debate this year uh, about the direction of the Republican Party and about the direction of the country. And, and, and I think the challenges facing us, they've never been greater. The Obama economy, it's not working. Obamacare is a disaster. Our constitutional rights are under assault from Washington. And, and, and as we look abroad, it, it seems like the entire world is on fire sure. right now. Senator, I want to ask you what you meant by this. Uh, it's some saying that you took a swipe at uh, Governor Mitt Romney, saying that his path to the presidency, quote, doesn't cut through the mushy middle. What did you mean by that? Well, that's actually something I've said many times, and it, it goes right back to the debate. You know, in Washington, there are a lot of folks in Washington who, who argue that the way Republicans should win is that we should nominate a candidate from the mushy middle, someone uh, who, 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 who is right in the middle, who is near the Democrats, who there's not much distinction. And if you look at it, we've tried that. I mean, look, it's a theory, but, but we keep trying the theory and it keeps not working. Every single time we do that, whether it's Gerald Ford, whether it's Bob Dole, whether it's John McCain, whether it's Mitt Romney, the result over and over again is we lose. And, and right. you know, I, I very much agree with Ronald Reagan, who said the way Republicans win is we paint in bold colors, not pale pastels. Pale pastels is a path to losing. Right. Uh, also in the New York Times, Senator Rick Santorum was considering running again uh, when asked about you. He says, we really need somebody with so little experience. And he went on to call you essentially a bomb thrower. What's your reaction? Do you have little experience and you just throw verbal bombs? Well, look, you know, there, there may be people that, that throw attacks. I think Rick Santorum's a good man. He's entitled to express his views. Uh, what I think that, 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 that people are going to assess is who's standing up and leading. I mean, that's the test as a primary voter I intend to apply, is who is standing up and leading. Think, look at the great issues of the day. Look at the great challenges, whether it is bringing back jobs and growth and economic opportunity, whether it's defending our constitutional liberties, or whether it is restoring America's leadership in the world. And, and I think mm -hmm. Republicans are going to nominate someone who will stand up and lead, who, who, who will give bold voice and action to the values that built this country. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about that leadership. Uh, the President of the United States was not in attendance at the Unity Rally uh. in Paris, the largest rally in the history of France, bigger than the end of World War II. The White House has now revealed uh, through Politico that apparently nobody asked the President if he wanted to go because they didn't think it was going to be that big a deal. So why even bother? I mean, for a while they were blaming the Secret, Secret Service. Yeah, we got to work out the security deal. Mm -hmm. Now it turns out they didn't even ask Senator Cruz. Well, the, the, this, this weekend was, was sad to see, and it, and it was a very visual manifestation of what's happened over six years. O over six years, America's receded from leadership in the world, and we saw it just this weekend as 40 world leaders walking down the street in Paris, and yet where is America? Where is the president? You know, presumably he was, he was back at the White House. They haven't released his schedule, I, whether he was watching football or what he was doing. He wasn't standing with our allies, the French, and he wasn't standing up against radical Islamic terrorism. He wasn't providing the leadership that the world desperately needs and, and, and that America has provided for so long. Do you think right? he can continue on the path of not being able to verbally call radical Islam exactly that? Well, look, I think you're putting your finger on, on, on precisely what the problem is. You cannot defeat radical Islamic terrorism if you're unwilling to utter the words radical Islamic terrorism and, and, and just 
you know, look in recent months. I mean, we're seeing this all over the world, whether it is these horrific attacks on journalists, on police officers in, in, in France, or, or, or whether it is in Sydney, Australia, or whether it is in Canada, or whether it is in Israel with, with Hamas terrorists coming in with butcher knives and cleavers, uh, murdering Israeli-American rabbis in synagogue as they pray. This is happening all over the world, and, and there is a consistent theme of radical Islamic terrorism, and we need clear leadership to combat it. Right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Senator Ted Cruz. Uh, do you have a month that you think you'll announce? Well, I think we'll see the, the field form uh, sometime in the next several months. I think by, by June, I expect the, the, the field to have formed, and, and it's likely to be a crowded field, and I think we'll have a vigorous debate. Senator, at that point. why wait? Come on, you know. <laughs> Well, I think everyone is, is, is looking at the race right now. You know, I'll tell you, I, I've been receiving a lot of encouragement, uh, a, a lot of support, uh, and, and, and I'm looking at it very seriously. So we should write you down. We should write him down as a yes. We'll write you down as a yes, but when you officially make it official, we'd love to have you do that here. Well, I, I, I look forward to visiting with you, with you going forward. All right. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Senator. Always Thanks, having Senator. you on. Appreciate it. Thank you.